All right, so here we go. Uh, as you can see, Japan did not attack anything. Uh, he bought five infantry, a fighter, and AA because uh, he did not fill all eight spots. <clears throat> he chose the uh, fighter over. Um, really, I, I think that would have been what? Did he use all his money? Yeah, he did use all his money. So, ten could have been an infantry and a tank, which an infantry and a tank, if you know my defensive power. Uh, terminology then a, a fighter is worth six a tank is worth five and a infantry is worth four so it would have been nine had he spent it on a infantry tank instead he got six out of a tank so it gave me slightly better odds is what all that's saying it gives me a 70 percent chance of taking tokyo this turn i'm pretty much going all in assuming that i am going to take tokyo i am going to build a carrier in 48 to catch the leftover fighters so these fighters go one two three and gotta land somewhere these fighters these fighters go one two three gotta land somewhere those are those two carriers coming up to c zone 60 or 62 we'll see uh 60 um but we'll figure that out on this after this is all done these guys go 1-2, and they either need to come back and land on a carry being built here, or land up here with my infantry coming up. But he's going to have an artillery and six fighters going there, so I'd rather save the fighters if I can, if they live. I'd rather them save and come back and land on a carrier here, which is just under threat of two bombers. Um, so a carrier... I don't need these two destroyers to go to C-Zone 60, so I have a carrier and two destroyers. Worst case scenario, no fighters to come back to them. That's not bad against two bombers. I'll take it. I am going to go ahead and build a destroyer over here in East USA. I'm very worried about uh, Japan. Uh, excuse me, Germany subs and Sea Lion. Like I said, his, his focus is going to be coming back. He's going to be hitting at this pretty heavy, I think. We're okay for the G18 Sea Lion, but G19, I don't know. So, we're just going to do everything we can to try to get to where we can build or do something, and we'll just go with it. So, one destroyer going over there. Land. I'm going to put an infantry and artillery in here for a reprisal attack, but if we don't win it, the reality is we're done. Um, we'll put my five infantry that I don't use in here he'd have to use you know his German or his Japan fighters two infantry two bombers to attack him to whittle him down for my second attack uh, if needed so yeah so that's what we're gonna do uh, the other three infantry and artillery are just gonna go down here in um, Borneo for later pickup because we got enough transports so we can pick them up later so here we go the moment I've been waiting for, again, this is another game where I know Toadsome's probably got a, a bunch of other games going on, but this is one where uh, he missed his 24 hours. It's been 48 hours since he took his turn. Again, I don't think he's stalling. Don't think he's stalling. I'm not saying that at all. Just saying I've been anxiously waiting to do this turn. As I mentioned, I think we're on different time zones too, which makes it that much more challenging, right? All right, let's make sure we get everybody here. 16 guys all filled up. Five spares that we had there. Double check our everything. Da, 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 da. So he's got the three fighters, two bombers. Let's see. So I should have, looks like 38 units should be correct. I should have 22 infantry, six artillery, two tanks, six fighters, a battleship, and a cruiser. And that gives me a 69.6% .6 chance to take at a 12.7 profit. course that's the averages we want above average 
we're just going to chill here, continue to chill, just to see what we need to do with these guys. Um, ready to drop them in UK if need be. Not much we can do here, but just fall back and get destroyed eventually. <laughs> There it goes. Favorable, yay! Let's see, it looks like we should both get about 12 hits first round of battle. main thing is I just need to stay relatively even. I got, let's see, two more land units attacking than he has defending, so. Nice. The cruiser hit. Whoa, the, <laughs> the battleship missed. That's what I get for getting excited about the cruiser hitting. Only one hit, okay. I'll definitely take only one hit from the uh, AAs. So we each got one hit so far. All right, we did better. We did better because there was the one from the cruiser too. So we got 13. He's gotten one hit so far. 12. Oh, he did better too though. Oh, I'm not gonna pull the cack there. Really just push the button and go. Oh, that did not look good. <laughs> I what are we down to? Sixteen, and he take the bombers last too. After infantry, I should be doing better than this. Eight, ten, fifteen to sixteen. Eee. Man, those bombers are tearing me up. Ah, uh, this is game. Well, I have to say, I picked a good fight. Whiff, everybody, whiff. Man, those bombers just destroyed me. That's it. All right. Time to move on to the next game. There's no coming back from that. 70% shot, though. I mean, come on. 70% and, I mean, I, what would that result end up? He had uh, three fighters, two bombers. What were the chances of three fighters and two bombers living? That is... 21% chance, so I guess kind of the opposite in essence, so it wasn't, well, it was a 50, yeah, from a 70% chance to me to, <sighs> top 20% for him, alright, well, it was a good game, I'm just going to call it there, I'm not even going to try coming up with anything creative after that though. All right, so keep an eye out. I started the next game. Let's see if I can do this correct. Because, you know, even if I, I to try and continue, he's going to build eight more ground. Plus, he's going to be able to fly in his uh, six um, fighters, and so that game was over. But so we got the game against Snake going. Um, it's a fun one as well uh i'll give up my summary on this game in just a minute all right so just back coming back to the summary part of everything uh the big thing is i think if i remember spin boss i did rush a one it was fairly even if i think attackers lost yeah yeah so it was a fairly neutral round one i believe um 
he built a tank rush and I decided to go with uh, my KJF setup into it um, with my sub buy down in India I did goof up big time in those early rounds where I could have pressured straight to Borneo and been there in a heartbeat um, with US coming south instead I actually went US north um, so I made some pretty big blunders there that being said, he also made a blunder letting me have an easy UK2 fleet drop. So, um, some some mistakes there. It, it, I was very nervous about going in, playing the a KJF into a tank rush. That's always a, I've never tried it. This is my first time literally trying a KJF going into the blunt of a tank rush against a top 10 player as well. So, uh, I, I have to say all in all, I'm pretty happy about it. The, uh, the game went pretty well, you know, up until I went to wipe out his, his Japan fleet and the UK just got massacred and, and trying to wipe out his fleet somewhere around in this area. I forget the exact location, so I'd have to go back and look it all up. Um, I, I will make some markers because it was a good game. I'm going to go back and find those highlight points and uh, put them in the comments. Um, but... Uh, we, we still, we continued to go well. We defended Moscow longer than uh, to be expected. He even, uh, I think it was G3, he took a shot at West Russia and got good results, got above average results and decimated me quickly uh, there. And uh, things were, I mean, things could have gone a loss in this game many times with some of these major battles, the fleet, the West Russia, the fleet. Then we were battling over Persia. Now I did get the better dice I think overall in Persia I had one really bad round in Persia but I had a couple of really good rounds in there too so I think my dice were more favorable in the Persia battles and then of course the huge disaster was the Mediterranean right um, I mean that that was supposed to be an 80 90 percent win and the fleet just massacred me he, he built those battle three battleships or whatever um, this looks like a brilliant move now uh, that was huge. Um, just, you know, dice weren't in my favor there. Uh, so then we did our best to create this great 70% shot. It was 65% if he built differently, but 70% shot on Tokyo. He pushed out. I got really good dice on uh, here to finish off the fleet. And, you know, I, I'm pretty happy with how it all went in, in the end here. There's so, considering how many major battles, you know, a lot of the trading and such, I, I don't think the dice was anything that was unexpected, but the UK fleet getting decimated by the Japan fleet, the UK and US fleet getting decimated here, the West Russia destroying the Russian troops up here were all huge battles. I got the Persia battle and I got the fleet over here. And then of course, the final battle here that was a 70% chance and ended up going the exact opposite way and him getting a top 20% shot. <clears throat> so, um, all in all, it, it made me more confident in attempting to defend a or do a KJF into the face of a tank crush. So, if you've already started, I already started my next one and against Snake, and Snake is, had that G1 tank crush. Um, I don't want to give any spoilers because I think this video is going to come out before where we're at in that game. So I won't give any spoilers on that, but, uh, you know, it, it's always a fun game playing against them. And so we're facing a tank rush again and um, see how we do. So see how round two against tank rush does. All right. This was a good one. Uh, definitely a, a learning one as well. And, you know, again, myself, just to remember, especially my biggest blunder was that whole US one, to be frankly honest. Um, thanks to Danny Uncanny for pointing that out. I, I, I just blew that one up. So, all right, on to the next one.